Hello YouTube, and welcome to my newly updated solo Raksha guide. Raksha is a boss that was released on December 7th of 2020. However, they had a significant update on December 14th of 2020. It is a very challenging solo boss that is currently located in Southeast Anachronia. Here are the requirements for killing Raksha. You need to complete the Raksha mini quest. I highly recommend having tier 90 range gear, 96 or better herb lore, 96 or better summoning, 99 in your combat stats, and a shield. It is possible to do it with less than this, but this will be very difficult. On December 14th, 2020, Jagex applied a general damage reduction to all the mechanics of the boss. They haven't actually specified how much of a damage reduction they have applied, but in my opinion, I think it's roughly 35%. Also, the shadow pools, when Raksha absorbs them, increase damage by 1% per percentage they absorb, instead of half a percent. So, if a shadow pool gets absorbed and Raksha goes up by 5%, that means Raksha will now do 5% more damage on most of the mechanics. For the loadout, I highly recommend bringing as much food as you possibly can. Other than that, you can bring some Sardom and Bruise to help heal up in combination with the food, some prayer potions, a shield to resonance certain abilities that Raksha will do, an overload to increase your damage at the boss, and then you just bring your best range here. I highly recommend also bringing a Ring of Death to reduce the cost of your deaths, and also some Onyx Bolt Ease in order to help reduce the amount of food you will need to use. There are six basic mechanics that you will need to know how to deal with in order to get a kill. There is all three styles of the auto attacks, the tail swipe or charge, the shadow bomb or shadow bomb barrage, the shadow energy attack, the shadow pools that spawn, and the shadow explosions. When dealing with the auto attacks, it is highly recommended that you learn how to prayer switch. However, it is possible to kill this boss only camping soul split, although in this example kill, you'll see that it is very painful to do that. In the ranged attack, Raksha will first lean up and then lean back down and simultaneously shoot a bunch of spikes from his tail at your character. You'll need to pre range before the spikes hit your character. For the magic attack, Raksha will lean up again and then open his mouth and shoot out a purple ball that will then travel towards your character. You need to pray magic before that purple ball hits your character. The melee attack is actually the hardest attack to see coming. Raksha will lean up and then lean back down and immediately hit your character for melee damage. I highly recommend actually having melee prey on before you have the melee attack happen. Raksha will never melee attack you twice in a row, nor will Raksha attack you while you're out of melee distance. Next, let's move on to the tail swipe or charge attack. If your character is in melee distance of Raksha, Raksha will choose to tail swipe your character. The tail swipe will hit anyone within halberd range of Raksha between 4 and 7,000 damage, depending on the amount of pulls that Raksha has absorbed. I highly recommend keeping your mouse behind your character at this time, so that when you see Raksha wind his tail back, your character is ready to move back away from Raksha at that time, in order to avoid getting hit by this attack. If your character is out of melee distance, when Raksha chooses to do the tail swipe or charge attack, Raksha will instead charge your character. Raksha will first roar facing your character, and then immediately charge in the direction of your character. I highly recommend watching out for the roar, and when the roar happens, you can actually surge in almost any direction at the same time Raksha is charging in order to prevent Raksha from actually damaging your character. You can also use a defensive ability at this point to reduce the damage that you would take from Raksha's charge attack. Whenever Raksha does this attack, 
Raksha will also spawn shadow pools that you will probably want to kill later. On phase 3, Raksha will also spawn a small dinosaur in addition to the shadow pools that Raksha normally spawns. Watch out for these as you go through the boss fight. Next, let's move on to the shadow bomb or shadow barrage attack. On phase 1 and phase 4, you're only going to get the shadow bomb attack. For this, you're going to get stunned and then there's going to be a green marker pointing where the shadow bomb is going to land. All you need to do is freedom and then run away from that marker in order to not get hit by the shadow bomb. If the shadow bomb hits you, you're going to take about 4000 magic damage and have your prayers disabled. The shadow bomb barrage attack happens on phase 2 and phase 3. Your character will get shadow bombed as usual, but there will be 3, 4, or 5 shadow bombs depending on how much anima pool has been absorbed by Raksha. For the shadow bomb attack, all your character will need to do is freedom in order to deal with the stun from the shadow bombs, and then keep moving until all the shadow bombs have been placed. Also, don't walk back into the smoke that the shadow bombs place because that will do 2000 damage a tick to your character. For the shadow energy attack, Raksha is going to spawn some orbs and prevent your character from moving. These orbs will do between 2 and 500 damage per tick, and in order to escape from these orbs, you just need to click on all the orbs at some point. If you take too long to click on the orbs, the orbs will hit you for a final hit of 2,500 and then you'll be freed from the shadow energy attack. You will continue to be able to attack Raksha or any poles or any small dinosaurs in this attack range, so be sure to keep attacking while you're in this mechanic. Every phase transition and every tail swipe or charge attack, Raksha will spawn some shadow pools. If your character stands over the shadow pools, your character will take around 1000 damage per tick. However, every shadow explosion attack and basically every spec on phase 3, Raksha will actually absorb some shadow pools. Roughly 2 or 3% per shadow pool that is alive on the field at the time Raksha is doing the absorption. On phases 1 and 2, Raksha will do a shadow explosion attack. Raksha is going to walk towards the center of the platform and face to the west and then release 5 explosions that do about 5000 magic damage. To deal with this mechanic, I highly recommend first clearing out any shadow pools that are around the field in order to prevent Raksha from absorbing the shadow pools. Next, you pray magic and devotion, and then you try to protect yourself against four of the shadow explosions. On the fifth one, you switch to the shield, turn off magic prayer, and then resonance the ability in order to gain up to 5000 health from it. Let's get into the actual boss fight now that we've covered the basic mechanics that you'll face throughout the fight. On phase 1, Raksha is going to start with 4 auto attacks, then tail swipe or a charge for more auto attacks, then a shadow bomb for more auto attacks, a tail swipe and a charge, 4 auto attacks, a shadow bomb, 4 auto attacks, and then Raksha will then do the shadow explosions attack, and then finally 4 auto attacks. Phase 1 is the easiest phase to do damage to Raksha, so I highly recommend trying to do as much damage as you possibly can to the boss during this phase. When you're getting towards the second shadow bomb attack, and Raksha is not close to 600,000 HP, which is the start of the second phase, then I highly recommend clearing any sh and all shadow pools that are on the field before Raksha gets to absorb them with the shadow explosion attack. After the Shadow Explosions attack, I highly recommend just DPSing Raksha to 600,000 and getting the phase over with quickly. Then we'll move on to Phase 2. On Phase 2, Raksha is actually going to start by stomping around and causing rocks to fall from the ceiling. 
Your character should run around at this point, maybe attack if possible, but focus on trying to stay mobile and avoid getting hit by the rocks as much as possible. It is very hard to predict when the rocks will land and thus it is very difficult to actually avoid rocks consistently. I suggest just making sure that you keep your health high and maybe use a defensive ability or two and or disruption shield in order to reduce the amount of damage you would potentially take from the rocks. The nerf was actually quite significant against this mechanic in that it would take at least three rocks to kill your character instead of just two, substantially increasing a character's chance at survival. <laughs> Once the rocks finish dropping, Rakshaw is going to start with four auto attacks, followed by the shadow energy attack, followed by four auto attacks, followed by the tail swipe or charge attack, and then another four auto attacks, the shadow bomb barrage, four auto attacks, another tail swipe or charge, four auto attacks, and then the shadow explosions, and finally four auto attacks. Again, DPS Rockshot this time to 400,000, but be mindful, especially closer to the end of the phase, of how many pools are on the field at the time. When the second tail swipe happens, you're going to want to clear any and all shadow pools off of the field before Rockshot will absorb them, either in the next phase or during a shadow explosions attack. Even if Raksha doesn't get to the Shadow Explosions attack to absorb the pools, it's quite easy for Raksha to instead absorb the pools on Phase 3 very quickly since every special attack will absorb them, and this can cause a very, very, very difficult time for your character during the boss fight. At 400,000 health points, Raksha is going to stomp the ground again and cause the ceiling to collapse. I highly recommend that you kill any of the shadow pools that are on the field at this time and spend the next start of phase 4 also killing any shadow pools that are on the ground. It's very important that you keep the field clear of shadow pools during this phase or else Raksha will not only heal but also get a lot more enraged throughout the phase. Raksha is going to start the phase with 4 auto attacks followed by the shadow energy attack with another four auto attacks and then the shadow bomb barrage attack and then another four auto attacks and then the tail swipe attack and then another four auto attacks. There is not going to be the shadow explosions attack on this phase. I highly recommend DPSing Raksha as much as you can during the time that you don't have any shadow pools on the ground. However, when Raksha gets closer to 200,000 HP, you should just focus on damaging Raksha as much as you can and forcing it to 200,000 HP, making it to Phase 4. If you've made it past Phase 3, Raksha is going to be substantially easier once you make it to Phase 4. Raksha is going to stop attacking you and charge through the gate that is where you started your instance. Any dinosaurs or slimes at this point will get killed off, so you will not have to worry about them, and they will not spawn at any time during Phase 4. Raksha will do two sets of two auto attacks and then a tail swipe, and then the instant kill, followed by another four sets of the two auto attacks and then tail swipe or shadow bomb. For the vast majority of the phase, stay in melee distance so that Raksha does not do the shadow bomb attacks too frequently. If your character stays out of melee distance for a long period of time, your character will eventually not be able to handle all the stuns and all the damage that the shadow bombs will actually do to your character. So your character should stay in melee distance stepping out only to deal with the tail swipe or to step behind a pillar to prevent getting killed from the instant kill mechanic. When Raksha is charging the instant kill mechanic, there's going to be a shield. If your character can break the shield, Raksha will immediately cancel the instant kill mechanic and will throw a huge amount of anima crystals outside. 
Your character can pick up these anima crystals and then activate a damage boosting effect, significantly increasing your character's damage per second. For each crystal your character picks up, your character will be able to do an extra 10% damage, which means if your character is able to pick up 20 crystals, your character can do 200% more damage. Be careful when doing this. I highly recommend pair switching while you're doing the run around to pick up the crystals and use freedom to help prevent you from getting stunned from the shadow bombs as well as anticipation. When you finally get Raksha's health to zero, the loot will spawn on the petal soul to the southeast. There are some very valuable drops although they were not as valuable as before the Raksha update happened. These are the unique drops that you can get from Raksha. There are the pre-existing Laceration and Blast Diffusion boots that were already available from other Slayer mobs at Anachronia. There is also the Fleeting Boots, the Shadow Spike, the Greater Ricochet Ability Codex, the Greater Chain Ability Codex, the Divert Ability Codex, and finally the Broken Shackle, which is the pet. Here is a price check of all of the drops from Raksha. The Laceration Boots and Blast Diffusion Boots are roughly around 20 million each. The Fleeting Boots are roughly around 80 million each. The Greater Ricochet Ability is the prized drop of Raksha. It's not worth a billion anymore, it's worth more around 600 million. There's the Greater Chain Ability Codex, which is roughly 130 million, the Divert Ability Codex, which is roughly around 60 million, and the Shadow Spike, which is around 160 million. This boss can actually still be quite profitable to do, even though these drops have become less valuable than they used to be. So, yeah, it is definitely still worth doing this boss. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and let me know if you all learned something especially about the new update that happened to Raksha recently. I'll be releasing some more videos, probably some more guides as well, in the future, so be sure to leave a like on the video, comment on the video as well, and subscribe to the channel. Thank you!